Hello everyone, and welcome to the Random Roller Coaster Review for August of 2024. This time, we will be reviewing Shockwave at Six Flags Over Texas. So let's just jump right into this. Shockwave is an old-school looping coaster built by Schwarzkopf. The ride stands at a height of 116 feet, reaches a top speed of 60 miles per hour, and has a track length of 3,600 feet. The ride's queue is nothing too notable. It's just a long, windy path with concrete and metal fencing that runs alongside the go-kart track next to the ride before you climb the stairs into the station and board the train. Shockwave features the old-school Schwarzkopf trains, with the high back seats which help with the high g-forces and the very minimalistic lap bars which are basically just a metal bar with some light padding on it. The trains aren't highly themed, they're just like fiberglass boxes with a rounded front end and some different tones of white with some yellow accents and the shockwave logo on the front. But they're very comfortable and very good and not too overprotective for the ride. Now let's jump into the ride experience. After dispatching from the station, the train advances through the transfer track area and very slowly climbs the lift. After disengaging the lift, the track immediately banks right slightly before going into a 180 degree right hand turn that dips down then back up kind of jankily. The train then unbanks and crests before diving down the drop and it pulls up into two back-to-back -back very forceful and powerful vertical loops that showcase the power and high g-forces of the coaster. After pulling out of the loops, the train ascends forcefully before popping up into a small brake run that doesn't hit too hard. After coasting through the brake run, the track dips down and banks sharply into a 180 degree right hand turn that provides good laterals and jank. The track unbanks and dives down to the ground level before delivering a sharp ejector pop that is a little bit painful to be honest. The track then pulls out and ascends before cresting and banking sharply left before dipping down slightly with a sharp pop of ejector airtime and laterals. The train then goes into a left-hand 180-degree turn over the station, delivering some more laterals. The track rises slightly before unbanking and diving down to ground level in another sharp pop of ejector airtime. The track then ascends again before dipping down, banking sharply left, and a shallow drop that still provides another sharp ejector pop. The track turns left 90 degrees and rises jankily in a piece of ascending straight track, before going over a sharp hill that enters a descending section of straight track. The train then enters a 270 degree, degree right hand helix that is pretty much forceless before going into a de another descending straight track element before sharply ascending and popping up into the final brake run with a small pop of ejector airtime before the brakes absolutely slam on. Overall, Shockwave is really a coaster of three sections. The first section is packed full of high positive G-forces before going into an ejector airtime filled segment with some laterals, before basically turning into a monorail, just going through some straight track and a forceless helix. The ride is janky in a way, but also smooth, and the trains are quite comfortable. The ride doesn't feel as repetitive as it sounds on paper, and is actually a really fun ride, and to me, one of the best coasters at Six Flags Over Texas. Last year, the ride ranked at number 58 out of 232, so pretty good for this ride, but that's all for this time. And I'll see you all next time on another adventure.